funny. Is there a doctor in the house? I'm feeling kind of sick and uh, my heart is pounding. <laughs> 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 My new friend Linda uh, was talking about this just a couple of days ago and talking it up and what fun it is and you should really come and, and so I got excited and said I would come and today at work I was telling everybody what I was going to do. Nobody had ever heard of it before and, and they said, well, are you going to tell a story? And I said, well, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> the topic is joy and you know my life. <laughs> I said, yeah, I think you should wait. <laughs> but as I was listening to the stories, I realized that, you know, I kind of belong here. It feels like family because, you know, clearly I have Dara's um, Marsha haircut. <laughs> I just got it today, by the way. And, uh, and uh, I took an agonizing walk like Nancy did. <laughs> <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure I was married to Diane's husband. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a dream, like Jen. <laughs> and uh, that's what I want to tell you about tonight. When I kicked that sorry ass to the curb, um, I had three small children, six, five, and two. And we were homeless for about seven months. And um, it was a long road back. Um, my first job was working in a laundromat for 100 bucks a week. And um, step by step, you know, we got a place to live and we got back on our feet and we started selling off <laughs> whatever few possessions we had. We had like a garage sale every week so that I could make the mortgage. and. Um, and you know, it was clear that I needed further education, and um, I went big. I applied to Penn because I had been to this uh, graduate education um, seminar where they tell you about the program. And, and I go up to the financial aid lady afterwards. She says, "Oh, with your situation, it would be fifty dollars of credit or fifty dollars a day. I don't know what she said, but it seemed good to me." And so I applied, and I got in. And my son now says, I don't know how you got into Penn, you just don't seem that scholarly to me. <laughs> anyway, um, I got there and then they started sending me bills and I started crying, like how can you let somebody in who can't afford to pay? But <clears throat> anyway, I graduated and I got a good job and, and the kids and I, and you know, we, um, we thrived. But back during that time when we were homeless, you know, we needed some hope. We needed some light to see by. And so I just told my kids, look, if you just graduate from high school, I'll take you anywhere you want to go, you know? Because <laughs> I, I couldn't really imagine how we were going to get through the next day. But um, one of those first jobs that I got, um, there was a, a poster on the a calendar on the wall with a photograph above it. And it was of Machu Picchu. I'd never seen it before, but it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. And I said, one day I'm going to go there. And Jim had that experience. And um, so um, my daughter um, did a semester overseas uh, in her second year of college. And she was in Ecuador. And I told my kids all along that I really want to go to Machu Picchu one day. And when she was in Ecuador, she said, you know, Mom, I'm going to be right next door. Let's go to Machu Picchu. And we did last December. Um, and, and we didn't just go, you know, in retrospect, um, I wish I would have taken the train, because there's a train. <laughs> we did the five-day hike. And um, I am, you know, had I known I was going to stand up here, I would have tried to lose 30 pounds today. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I walked up and down Bell Tavern Boulevard or, uh, Road, which is a very short, very steep hill, a couple of times <laughs> to prepare for this. And uh, much teacher, you know, you go up to about 14,000 feet. We did the extra, which is like almost 16,000 feet. Four days, no shower. I had the Peruvian um, uh, 
variety of Montezuma's recent revenge, and, um, and it was the best time of my life. Um, my daughter, who's much more fit than I am, and who also had a crush on the guy, was always rushing to get ahead of us so she could to him. And so they would walk a while, hike a while, and then they would take their rest, and they would wait for mom to catch up. <laughs> but by the time I got there, they're ready to go. So. <laughs> anyway, when I got to that, um, that sun gate where you look down over the view of Machu Picchu, I was sobbing, of course. Um, all those years, I thought I needed more money. It was always what I thought I needed. And what I really needed was more self-confidence. Sometimes I needed more courage. Lots of times I needed um, to open myself up, let down the walls, and, uh, and I realized at that moment, at that sun gate, that every step I had taken had prepared me for that journey. And it was the greatest joy I've experienced. Thank you.